my initial years. These were initial years. Uh, how did I get out of that? Uh, uh, you know, this is cat and mouse game, or, or again chicken. Um, how do you prove yourself until the clients come to you? And why would the clients come to you when you you are a rookie? So you had to I would write articles for newspapers. One out of ten used to get accepted, but that was enough for a high, which would last another month. And then again, I start sending. Well, that's a, but how did I get lucky? I got lucky with the two of the events that I will tell you. Mr. Osi Mathur was the partner of uh, Devi Tanji. And uh, lo and behold, one eve, one morning, he came over on a weekend, and he says, uh, "Tulsi, there we have uh, we have some cases of the uh, chairman of Lipton's, Mr. Goodwill, and uh, the Punjab in Punjab court there are four cases, in Himachal there are two cases." And uh, we want you to to tell me what is the best course of action. So he brought the complaint. He whatever papers they were, I read them, and I said that uh, they'll be quashed. He says, "Are you sure?" I said, "I know the law backwards." So he says, "All right, you draft a petition. I'll come back in the evening." And then I will take the train back to Delhi, and we go from there. We'll pay you for for drafting. Very good. I drafted the petition, and they took that petition to Calcutta. And this the headquarters was Calcutta, and uh, there was one Mr. Balai Re, who later became the Advocate General, who was a senior advocate of Lipton. And uh, he said, "I want to meet the person who wrote this, who drafted this petition." So they asked me to come to Calcutta. I went to Calcutta, and uh, he kept us waiting for two and a half hours. In the meantime, I later learned that he was rewriting the complaint, the petition, with pencil in pencil. And he, when he called us, he says. This is what I have written. Well, if you don't like it, you needn't incorporate. But I want to tell you one thing, young man, and that is in criminal law, it is more important to know what not to say than what to say. You don't spend an extra word in a criminal petition because it can be misinterpreted sometimes. So that's that's one thing I learned from him. And we succeeded um, in all the cases, getting all the cases quashed. So I, got, I, my fee had risen to eleven hundred per day. I mention these uh, figures because it's important for people to know that youth is a struggle. And uh, eleven hundred a day was uh, princely ransom. We had gone on holiday to Masuri when one Mr. K K Sharma, the chief law officer of Brookbond, landed up there, and he says, "No, no, but a warrant has been issued against our chairman, and we want you to come to Simla." I say, "I am on a holiday." He says, "You'll be on holiday there also. We are going to make all the arrangement. You just have to go to the court for half an hour." Uh, I, when I still express my reluctance, he says we'll double your fee. Oh wow! <laughs> so that was another temptation, and we went and we got the stay order. Uh, you know, event which uh, changed the course of my my career was uh, one evening out of the blues. Mr. K P S Gill ends up at my house. And he was accompanied by his class fellow and my friend. And he started discussing his case. There were three cases: murder case, this and that, 
which had been filed against him while they were on duty so he says that uh, what do i do i said go for caution this complaint is not cannot be entertained by the court so he put pulled down and the set of papers and he says but we have already applied and the high court rejected our petition and we have gone to supreme court and the supreme court case is pending you have a look do we have a chance so i read that and i said this petition will be dismissed because you haven't raised the best grounds so he said what are the best grounds i could rattle off the cases constitution bench and this and that or they were all on on my fellow tips so every day i used to be doing nothing else he was so shocked i said this this is an incompetent petition and then while going he says do you know who drafted it i said i don't care he is a former chief justice has drafted i said but no this is the, you, he has raised the right grounds anyway the supreme court also dismissed it with a direction they will appear and mr gill kept calling those are the days we didn't have any other mobile phones and all so he sent his father to meet me and he says kamarpal wants you to come to guwahati tomorrow as if i i had uh, uh, too many cases i said sure i will go so we i went and uh, there were four other lawyers in that case there were four accused four lawyers and i was the lawyer for mr gill and i took the order of the supreme court we went to the magistrate and i kept it in front of him i said here is the order of the supreme court for compliance and he realized that uh, i have no choice that's that's how the magistrate understood and granted stay of arrest that's all that we wanted once the stay was granted we again went on a, on behalf of another person another accused who was not party that case gave me at that time more than a crore of rupees wow <laughs> and i was uh, i was spending 3 days in a week over there either traveling or there appear come back appear come back and everybody wanted to engage me um these are the two things you know i got lucky and i i remember when i joined the profession my father took me to mr sibyl kapil's father um, mr sibyl uh, hiralal sibyl and my father were class friends so mr sibyl tells me young man remember one thing opportunity knocks at every door but you have to be ready to grab it if it goes god knows where when it will come so be ready i think uh, that was that made a lot of sense and that's what made me fight hard so your career has been nothing short of an inspiration for all of us can you shed some light on who are the mentors that have helped you in shaping your career you know uh, i had one mentor although he was my client i learned a great deal from him that's kps gill i was uh, i was nobody he was 10 years older than me but the amount of clarity that he had uh, for a police officer was rare and uh, we we were on equal footing i always his advisor but i had tremendous respect for him the man will never lie and uh, he was a voracious reader now coming to the current times how do you see litigation changing post pandemic and like body language and demeanor plays a very crucial role in trials criminal trials and how then how do we conduct uh, cross examination uh, effectively in a virtual setup now i think uh, 
the this, this is one of the positive aspects of uh, the pandemic pandemic uh, i am every day arguing on virtual court and uh, i feel that the judge is much closer to me i can watch his expressions i can decide that this is the argument which he is not accepting what is he, i can actually hear when they are conferring with each other so there is a hell of a lot of advantage in virtual court much better than the real court there is perfect discipline uh, of course there is uh, you know bloomers going on uh, we haven't perfected the the, the software or the hardware but uh, cross examination it will be even greater advantage because the way i can watch your expression and interpret your body language when you are so up close i can't do that when he is in the in the witness box um the there, there is uh, the criminal trial is conducted in complete uh, in, in a very messy manner the lawyers don't have the opportunity for honing their uh, skills cross examination and all most of the time 99% the cross examination is without forethought and you you don't know you are not sure of the answer and yet you ask a question it can be disastrous for the case but uh, like this i think lawyers are going to be at an advantage and how much time do i save half the day i keep sitting in the in the court waiting for for the matter and then all of a sudden three matters will come together but this is far better system i hope we adopt it for good you know the famous read uh, by me uh, from the beginning while i was a student was parimason i read every book 10 times but uh, the cross examination you have to you know create a pattern you have to do a lot of work and decide that what is it that you want the witness to say you will stay away from that point and you will go on with irrelevant questions or with very easy questions you build up a rapport with the witness and then you slip in a question where he begins to trust you you ask a question and sometimes you we are rewarded by an excellent answer so i don't agree with the aggressive uh, lawyers who think that they can intimidate a witness i don't agree with those lawyers who think they can intimidate the judge that's not advocacy advocacy means being a gentleman and being courteous always and uh, we we are we are in the case in pursuit of truth and uh, let's not uh, spoil the atmosphere because in that atmosphere neither the judge nor the witness not the prosecutor not the defense is going to gain